group of men stalking us on a camping trip. Camping story. Before the story begins, I would like to clarify that I'm writing this story and these lines during the last days of the month of August in the year 2023. Uh, to set the stage for this story, we must go back to the far off year of 1988. The location is the Cascade Mountains of Oregon. I was 10 years old, and with me was my mom, my dad, best friend, and our golden retriever, Amber. That's Amber, A-M-B-E-R, Amber. <sighs> we were very much an outdoor family, and had many camping trips before this one and since, but to this day, when I think about it, I still remember the terror I felt that weekend so long ago. Uh, after a brief talk with my father recently, it kind of came back to the front of my mind. He was also able to fill in a few details that I had forgotten. This holiday was like many others. We packed up the station wagon with everything we would need for a hike into one of our favorite lakes to camp at. To make this trip even more exciting for me was the fact that it was my birthday weekend and I got to pick this lake. After we arrived at the trailhead and got our packs on, my dad got his sidearm out and strapped it on his belt. In Oregon, open carry was permitted in national forests and my dad always had a gun on his hip while in the woods which always added a sense of security. We had a close call with a bear one time in which it came in handy. The lake was about a four mile moderate hike in through some thick forest but the trail itself was well maintained and was never busy so it was going to be a very pleasant hike in. And for the non-Americans watching, 4 miles is equals to 6.4337 and 38 kilometers. Meaning basically 6.4 kilometers. We started off on our hike and back in the 80s it was not uncommon to have your dog off a leash on the trails in the forest, so we let Amber run and do her thing. She was a good dog and never ran off for too long or jumped on people. She did love people, though, and speaking of people, we had not seen anyone else on the trail after about two miles seen on the hike, which was nice since it was just all of us talking, laughing and enjoying nature. My best friend and I started to hike ahead of everyone else because we were so energized and excited about finding the first and best tent spot once we got to the lake. Amber was bounding ahead of us and having a great time too. We were about 20 yards ahead of my parents when Amber stopped dead in her tracks. And by the way, 20 yards is 18.28 meters. I thought maybe she saw a chipmunk or something, maybe a bird. But her hackles came up and she let out the lowest of growls. She never growls, so we stopped walking and I thought maybe a deer or bear or something was just off the trail and she saw or heard it. We immediately started walking backwards and my parents caught up to us. My dad asked us what was going on and I told him that Amber is up the trail and is growling at something. He tells us girls to stay back with my mom 
and he walks ahead to see where Amber was at on the trail. Uh, my dad gets up to her and looks around. I hear Amber whimper a bit while looking off the trail. My dad comforts her and calls her back and walks back to us. He says it must have been an animal and he did not see anything right off the trail or ahead of us. He says to let him take the lead and we continue to hike. It did not take long before it was forgotten and Amber and the rest of us are all having a good time again. We arrive at the lake and much to my delight there was no one else there camping. The water was clean and blue, and the shade from the trees made the whole scene just perfect. My friend and I found the best spot to set up our tent and my parents follow suit. After we had come set up, my folks went off to fish just down the hill and my friend and I took off with Amber to walk around to the other side of the lake to catch salamanders. We only made it about an eighth of a mile when Amber stopped and started to growl. We stop and look around and her brush rustling. Then, right in front of us, a man walked out of the trees. Amber stayed right by our sides and started to bare her teeth. He was taller than my dad, so at least 6.4. He was very skinny, but had very broad shoulders. This is almost 2 meters, is 1.93 meters. Uh. Uh, he was clean cut and was wearing black jeans and a white polo shirt with loafers. I mean, he did not look like he had hiked at all or was even dressed for the outdoors. He almost looked like he came out of church. We just stood there trying to process the situation when Amber began to bark. The guy just stood there, not moving, and he smiled like the creepiest smile. It felt like someone who thought that was what a smile was supposed to look like. Amber kept barking and this got my parents attention and they look up to us and called out to us to come back. We complied and started to walk back towards them. My dad met us halfway and told us to go back to the campsite and that he was going to talk to this guy. We got back to our camp and my mom sat with us. I could hear my dad asking the guy if he needed help or was he a fellow camper who just had set up a camp away from the lake. My dad was being polite and calm but I could see he was on guard and trying to feel out the situation. Now is the time to mention that my dad was ex-army and can be very intimidating when needed. The conversation continues. The guy told my dad that he was on a walk and did not mean to intrude on us. The guy says goodbye and walks back into the woods. My dad walked back to camp, sat down and told us that he thinks the guy may just be a yuppie camper uh, and does not know much about the outdoors. But my dad said that he got a weird vibe off of him and would be keeping an eye out for him. Amber stayed by our side and was calm. Yet, she kept looking towards the direction the guy went. <sighs> a bit more time goes by and we have a nice campfire going and the sun was starting to set. We cooked some dinner and made some more afterwards. We cooked some dinner and made s'mores afterwards. 
my friend and I decided to go to our tent and read some books and tell each other some scary stories. Uh, Amber followed us to the tent and laid right outside of the door. My parents walked down to the lake to sit, have a beer and just chill. They were never more than 50 yards away, which was 45.72 meters. Not long after my parents walked away, I hear Amber start to growl. Then we hear footsteps coming from the woods behind our tent. My friend and I turn out our flashlight and go quiet to listen. The footsteps stop at the edge of the woods. <laughs> then we hear heavy breathing and a grunting sound. Amber starts to bark and when the, and we then hear the footsteps retreat to the woods. Amber whimpers a bit, and then I hear my parents walking back to the camp. I go out and tell them what happened. My dad said that he heard Amber barking, and this is why they came back up. I ask my dad what we should do, what is going on, and if this strange guy was the one creeping around. He tells me that we will see about moving camp in the morning since we still have three days left on the trip and nothing has happened to warrant just leaving. But he said that we will play it by ear and just be a little more vigilant and if something changes we will decide what to do next. He tells us to try to get some sleep and we all turn in for the night. The next morning, we get up and have breakfast. After breakfast, we head down to the lake to fish. It was a beautiful day and we were having so much fun, the events from the prior day were almost forgotten. We decided around lunch time that we would go for a short hike to the waterfall that is up from the lake. We were gone for only about an hour and when we came back we found our tents opened and our sleeping bags dropped out on the ground my dad tells us to hang back with my mom and then he goes to investigate he comes back and says nothing is missing but it was not an animal that did this he says we should break camp hike back to the car and find another spot to camp for the next couple of days I could tell my dad was not wanting to frighten us, but I heard the urgency in his voice. <sighs> I was very disappointed, but if it meant we could enjoy the rest of the trip and not worry about some creep messing with us, then it was worth it. We broke camp and started our hike back. Dad was in the lead and we were double timing it and made it back to car in record time. As we walk over to the car, we can see that one of our tires was flat. Uh, not a big deal. We always had a spare. But when my dad bent down to start taking the locks off, we swore it was not just flat. Someone had slashed the tire. Dad changed that tire in record time and we threw everything into the car. And he goes to turn the car on, but it would not... Start! That swears, gets out of the car and pops the hood he says, shit, 
It turns out someone took our spark plug. Wires! All cars like that Chevy wagon did not have internal hood releases. You could just pop the hood from the outside. <sighs> that slams the hood, says some very colorful words and kicks some rocks. We were stuck. And no one else was at the trailhead. We were stranded. My parents are calm under pressure. And after a few minutes of discussion, it was decided that Dad would start walking down the road until he could hitch a ride to town and go to the auto parts store. Mom and the rest of us were going to wait with the car and look for someone to hopefully pull into the trail head and help us. A few hours go by and no one has come to the trailhead. It is getting hot and we are hungry and tired. My mom makes us some lunch and we go to sit under a tree to cool off. Amber is by our side and was calm, but then we hear a voice. Amber leaps up and starts to whimper. The creepy guy from yesterday comes down the trail and is asking my mom if we can help. My mom tells him that we're fine, that it is being settled and my dad will be back soon. This creep then tells her that his cam is close and he's parked on the old fire road that is near the lake and asks us if we would like to come back to his cam and wait until my dad returns. Mom sternly tells him no, that we will just wait here and thank you anyway. He does not like this. He tells my mom that it is not safe out here for a pretty lady and two young girls. My mom, like my dad, is not pushover and asserts herself again that we do not need any help and to please just leave us alone. The guy just stands there smiles wide and then just turns around and leaves my mom is visibly shaken and us girls were just a bit scared my mom comes over to us and tells us that we need to stay close do not wander and that we will be okay my friend and i are really kind of freaked out and we are just hoping my dad will come back soon After about another 30 minutes, the creepy guy comes back. This time though, he's not alone and has a slightly younger guy with him. The other guy is dressed as a yuppie camper and had a very stern look on his face. My mother stands her ground as they approach. Amber starts to low growl and her hackles go up. The two guys flank us and one of them flashes a gun tucked to his belt. The older guy tells us that we need to go with them and that they were not asking. My mom backs up next to us without taking her eyes off them, reaches to her belt and pulls out her bowie knife. My mom said we will not be going and that they need to leave now. The two men did not even flinch at this and said that we will come with them or they will hurt us. At this moment though, Amber goes from just growling to barking and puts herself between us and them. This makes the guys stop. My mom yells that they need to leave now. They start backing up and at that moment we hear a truck pulling into the trail head parking lot. At the side of the truck the guys start to walk away fast and disappear into the tree line. The truck was a forest ranger and he had my dad with him. My dad jumped out of the truck and ran over to us asking if we were okay. The ranger came over and asked who those men were and if we were okay. My mom explained everything while my dad hugged us girls and told us that we would be okay. 
the ranger takes off to go looking for the man. My dad tells us that he was about 5 miles from the town when the ranger picked him up and took him the rest of the way to get the part for the car. He then drove him back to our car. After hearing what happened, my dad was pissed and wanted to find the guys who tried to kidnap us and that had been terrorizing us for the past 24 hours. 5 miles by the way is 8.04 kilometers. The ranger came back and told us that he had almost caught up to them, but they sped away in their truck with a camper in tow. They had been parked behind a small ridge behind the lake on that old logging road. He did not get a plate, but he radioed a description of the men and their truck and camper to the local sheriff's office. He also took our information and said that he would pass it on to them. He waited with us until Dad had the car fixed and we were able to leave. We decided not to continue camping and instead drive a couple of hours to spend the last two days of the trip at the beach and stay in a hotel. A few days later, a deputy called my dad and told him they never f did find the man. He said that it was likely a crime of opportunity after seeing a woman with two girls in tow. He was sure they had been watching us from off the trail and had messed with our camp to judge how my dad would react. When my dad seemed to be too big of a threat, they sabotaged our car hoping to put us in a situation where we were vulnerable. He said they would follow up with us if they find out anything else. But according to my dad, nothing ever came out of it. <sighs> Years later, I tried to do some research on crimes in that area of Oregon during the 80s that might have involved something like we experienced. All I could find was a few reports of campers being robbed and a few cars broken into. There was one case of a young lady and her dog going missing from an area near there, but it was never determined what had happened to her, or even if it was something bad or she just ran away. I can tell you that we did go back to that lake a few years later and had a very uneventful camping trip. It was nice to go back and find some joy in a spot that was special to me. Uh, I really hope those creepy guys never hurt anyone and maybe were caught for other crimes. I will never know though. I just hope to never run into a situation like that again. I can say that having a dog along with us helped our situation. She was the hero and kept us alert. Uh, Amber went on to live until she was 12 years old and passed with her favorite people around her. Remember to stay safe, stay watchful, and it never hurts to have a sweet brave dog with you. <laughs>